With Holy Week unfolding on the Christian calendar, more than a thousand people in Calgary will join the millions worldwide on Good Friday as they gather to remember the suffering of Christ on his journey to the cross. Charles Neenkirken, Professor of Church History and Spirituality at Ambrose College University, has personally experienced the expressions of Holy Week both here in downtown Calgary and around the world. He sees it as a crucial element in the scheme of sacred time. Sacred time fo focuses, in a Christian sense, on the great rhythms of the redemptive story. Neenkirken says that different traditions of Christianity recognize the seasons and celebrations of sacred time in varying degrees. You have this whole concept of preparation built into the Christian calendar so that people don't just simply jump into a feast day, they prepare for celebration. From the early years of the church, the preparatory season of Lent, including Holy Week, has brought pilgrims to the very path in Jerusalem that Jesus would have walked on his way to the cross. Over the centuries, Neenkirken says that these stations of the cross were recreated around the world for those who could not travel to Jerusalem but longed to feel connected to the pain and suffering of Christ. Well, it, it has something to do with the human temperament. I mean, every sincere Christ follower wants to get as closely in touch with the person he or she is following as is possible. Today, there's hardly a retreat center that you go to, whether Protestant or Catholic, that doesn't have some version of the Stations of the Cross. For those who live in Calgary, the Way of the Cross winds its way through the downtown core. So it's a large diocesan event. Um, this is the 28th year that it's being held. Um, there's more than 1,100 people that attend. Um, and basically they gather in front of the cathedral here at St. Mary's. Um, and we walk to the various stations. So there's 14 stations. And each of the stations represent an experience or a moment that uh, Jesus experienced on his way to his death, so on the cross, on the road to Calvary. Yana Dupal is the social justice coordinator for the Roman Catholic Diocese of Calgary and oversees every detail of the Way of the Cross on Good Friday. So it's, it's a public event, so we really try and invite everyone to come. Uh, because it's kind of a walk through the inner city of Calgary, we do get a lot of people, like we get families, but we also get a lot of people from different agencies that come, those who are helping the homeless. We also get uh, just people even from the streets who decide to come and join us. There's people of different faiths that, you know, decide this is something that they want to be part of. And of course, we have our faithful Catholics who come and join us um, every year. Though the Stations of the Cross are most visibly seen as a Catholic tradition, Neekirkin says there has been a resurgence of some of these traditional expressions among Protestant churches, with a desire to use these intentional spiritual exercises for personal spiritual growth. They are spiritual aids to move the heart into a deeper sense of union and communion with God revealed in Jesus Christ. They are aids. They are a means to the end. They are not an end in and of themselves. It's a very dramatic meditational exercise to walk the Stations of the Cross, all 14 of them. So dramatic, in fact, says Neen Kirkin, that it opens a world of spiritual wonder. You know, imagination is imagination. And one thing the Stations of the Cross do is they stimulate sacred imagination. In this world of sacred imagination, another expression of the Stations of the Cross was born. Chantal Gander was one of the creators of Lacrimosa, which means crying with tears, a fusion of dance theater and contemporary dance reflecting Jesus' journey to the cross. It's based on the Stations of the Cross, so it, the whole uh, act, Lacrimosa, takes you through the Stations of the Cross in an abstract and flowing way. So not particularly stopping at each station, but really moving through them with, um, with a flow and with an ease. So. Instead of words, the Christian dance company Corbera chose to use symbolic imagery, red paint on their hands symbolizing the blood of Christ and the rejection of the Savior to be crucified, and the water of healing and forgiveness. In spite of the depth and the weight of the Stations of the Cross and of Christ's journey, there is this beauty in the washing and the cleansing that continues on into today. I would say it's like a physical embodiment of the pain, of the torment, of the passion that Christ had. So really, it's a visceral, you feel those pains and you feel that weight and you feel the darkness and then you feel that cleansing and so I think it is something that you actually walk away from the same as when you tell a story and we've felt like we've told it with our bodies. 
Drapel echoes that need for a deeper physical interaction, using an actual cross as a key element in the walk. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of the moment where they get to hold it and really, really feel what Jesus, I guess, felt at that time. So. We often, and rightfully so, focus on the finished work of Christ, everything that Christ has done for us as a result of his death. But there's, by observing Holy Week, as I do in my own scripture reading, I walk through the complexity of human relationships in Holy Week, all the things that happen to Christ that can happen to any of us in life, like the horrific things, the betrayal of close friends. Who of us who has lived long enough hasn't experienced a certain amount of betrayal uh, in human relationships? You know, whatever you think of Good Friday, it's Black Friday before it's Good Friday. It has to be terrible before it can be good. What, what Holy Week says to me is that you can take the most horrific thing that can happen to a human being, and in this case, it was human beings murdering God, and that can be redeemed for good.